Greetings and welcome to another fake grant order video. It has been a long three months of nothing but reruns and simple events, but it is finally here. The uh, Cosmos in the Last Build first chapter. Uh, let's see. Permafrost Empire Anastasia, the Grand Duchess of the Beast Nation. Or whatever that's called. But anyway, we finally get to continue on with the story, which got very, very interesting. So we are getting quite a few things with this, uh, well, with the release. So the first thing is we are getting some animation updates for a lot of servants. So Mash is getting one. I don't see much difference there, unfortunately. Now Fumakotaro finally gets some ninja-esque looking uh, Novatum animation and attack animations. Jinke finally gets some love. I think we already have this one here, but her new attack animations definitely look a lot better. Kiyohimiya finally gets the love she deserves. She gets some very nice and flashy attack patterns with all the fire that she goes around. And I'm really looking forward to seeing her No Pants animation update. Martha finally smacks things around with her staff. And we finally get a good look at Tarask, which is very nice. And Medea Lily gets a bit flashier from what I can see. And Edmund Dances finally gets some good, well, really fancy looking attack animations. But now, let's let's talk about the summoning campaign, which is the most important thing here, obviously. So this is the stuff that we can summon right now. There will be a second summoning campaign in one or two weeks for... Well, we'll, go, we'll take a look at everything else. So what do we have? We have Anastasia, obviously, at Atlanta Altar. Finally, if you watch Fake and Apocrypha, then you know who her, Avika Braun, and these two guys are. And this one down here as well. So let us go take a look at them, shall we? Oh yeah, and we also get a brand new Mystic Code, which is actually pretty good because of this. Increased attack and increased MP damage, so if you're hoping to nuke something down, this is not a bad one to go with. It also completely re resto it restores HP and removes all debuffs, which is very nice. Well, defensive debuffs anyways. And it grants one ally evasion for one attack for three turns, so that is not bad. Unfortunately, the cooldown on everything, as always, is very, very long. So yeah. Now, on to Anastasia herself. So, she is a caster, as we pretty much saw. Three arts, okay, pretty decent. That's what we we're expecting from casters. Ignore invincibility for one turn, increases the own arts performance, and reduces one enemy's debuff resistance. An interesting set of skills here, and the increase in arts can actually go pretty strongly, so this one is definitely worth leveling up. Increases party's attack and reduces enemy's attack, okay. Two and one, not bad. And charges own MP cards from 30 to 50 percent, and chance to stun one enemy for up to 60 percent. Okay, so she's another one of those sketches that focuses on spamming her noble phantasm, from what I can tell. Let's see, deals damage to all enemies, as then seals their skills for one turn, and reduces their defense for three turns. Okay, nothing too particularly that's outstanding. I mean, she's solid as a offensive caster, with increasing and reducing attack. Increasing her own arts performance, debuff resistance, and all that other stuff. So really, nothing particularly to write home about from what I can see. Now let's take a look at her Bond 10 craft essence. Is there anything interesting? Uh, ah, here it is. Increases party's arts performance and MP damage by 10%. Eh, nothing particularly amazing. So on to the big one. Atlanta Ultra Berserker. So let's see. Too quick to buster. Uh, let's see, what is the charge rate? 1% uh, on attack, okay, that's very interesting. Let's see, increase on critical star absorption and gain criticals, excellent, this is what we want to see. This basically guarantees that she will get these 10 stars, and it can go down to a 5 turn cooldown, so that's not too bad. Increases party's quick performance, exactly the same as normal Atlanta, so she kept that skill. And grants self evasion for 1 turn, increase on critical damage for 3 turns. So she either evades or she deals massive damage with criticals. Okay then. Increases buster performance, critical star generation, critical damage. Now let's see. Deals damage to one enemy, steals or MP for one turn. This is always nice. Inflicts curse, uh, irrelevant, at least for a while anymore. And the damage is a little on the low side, unfortunately, but she is a four star and she is a berserker, so she will always deal 50% extra damage to almost everybody. So let's see, I don't recall her ever gaining this armor in Apocrypha, but yeah, I would keep her like that. So anyway, on to the next one, Avi Kebron, he's finally here. So let's see, we have another caster, triple arts, as we expect from casters. 
Increase on Arts and Buster performance for three turns, 20 to 30 percent. It's solid. Territory MP got okay. And third skill grants. So basically, if he ki if he is killed, grants party invincibility for two attacks. Uh, three attacks at skill level 10 and recovers the party's HP. Okay then. This is actually a very nice skill because as a three-star servant, he is definitely going to die. Yeah, he's only got 9,000 HP. So you activate the skill and suddenly everybody else gets protected. So not not a bad skill, actually. Now, no Phantasm. Anti-Army Buster deals damage to all enemies, increases party's MP generation. This is not charge it, this it just increases how much they gain from taking damage and dealing damage. The damage is a little on the loose but he is a three-star, so it should be too difficult to get it up to 500%. Although the important part is actually this here, but the most you'll be able to get is usually 10%, I guess. You usually start with him. So if you keep it on um, a solid three-star caster, honestly. Nothing too fantabulous, but nothing too bad either. Now, the craft instances. Grant evasion for three attacks, reduces damage taken by three to four hundred percent. And this is the five-star one. Um, I'm not particularly fond of this one, honestly. A lot of the bosses in the game, at least the really difficult ones, uh, usually have ignore evasion of some sort or ignore invisibility. For example, the one that always stands out in my mind is the final boss of Camelot. I mean, right on the very first turn, she launched her noble phantasm and had ignore invisibility, and it, you could not use this to survive, so yeah, I don't really like this one. Now, final char char charges MP gotch every turn and increase MP damage. Okay, this is actually not bad. Considering that the only one we currently have that charges MP every turn is, is Ilya Cosmos, which is a 5-star, very limited one during some event. This is actually not bad. And the effect that increased MP damage as well is definitely welcome. So this one is definitely one you could try chasing after. It's only the 4-star, so it's a lot easier to get. And the effect is definitely not bad. And lastly, Light of Intellect. Increase the arch performance and MP generation rate. Okay then, so if you're just starting out and you can max out this one, this is definitely a good one for your casters. Not only do they gain increased MP gain because of this, but they gain it even more because of this, so... Not bad, in an Arts uh, MP spam team, this is definitely not a bad to go one. Now, that's the first banner. Now, let's take a look at the second banner that will only have two servants on it that's coming in a couple weeks. Ivan Z Terrible. Uh, let's see, he's a rider, double bar tower buster, okay... Very low MP charge rate, so that's a little bit problematic. Increase on MP generation for deterrence and remove on debuffs. Okay then, very solid. Gain critical stars every turn. Increase on buster performance for three turns. Not fantabulous, but not bad. You can use it on the first turn and just gain a lot of critical stars every turn. Grants of invincibility, reduce all enemies attack and remove their buffs. This is the most powerful effector because it doesn't have a percentage tied to it this is guaranteed to remove all of their buffs so that is the most powerful part of that granting himself invisibility is pretty nice for survivability and reducing their attack is also nice so this is definitely one that would level up to max first this one if you're going for damage then definitely max it second and increase on mp generation rate this is definitely not bad at all so all three are definitely worth leveling so let's see, quick performance. Here we go. The bees that accompany me on my journeys. Do damage to all enemies. Reduce their buster resistance by 20%. Interesting there. And increase on MP damage for one turn. Activates first. Okay. So he could be your main AoE damage dealer. After a set, after strengthening, the damage, does go, the damage goes up. The effects go up. And I think that is really about it. We gain 100% extra more damage, but that's it. So yeah, Ivan the Terrible. Not a bad AoE rider from what I can see. I have no idea what type of creature that is, but that's him. And lastly, Antonio Salieri. The first of the cheap... Well, the only cheap, actually, Avenger that we have. Or that we'll, we will have. Uh, let's see, MP charge rate is 0.7, okay, MP charge on, he gains 5% every time he's attacked, that's actually not too bad. Let's see, increase on critical damage to 3 attacks and gain critical charge every turn, but he has no way to absorb him, so he needs help in that aspect. Increase on arts performance for 3 attacks, 5 turns, okay, 
Reduces one enemy's defense for three attacks I turn. So, okay, this is definitely the one I would level up first. Oh, MP generation while taking damage, but everybody gets debuff resistance down. Charge own MP by three power in three every turn. Deals damage to all enemies. Reduces party's critical star generation rate. Oh, that's it. And reduces their arch resistance. Okay, then. So, as a cheap Avenger, he's definitely in the... I'm going to help others and their arts cards team, from what I can see here. Yeah, he definitely wants to get along with other arts users. So, let's see. He actually looks pretty good there. Then, he gets transformed into his Avenger, from what I can tell. And this is definitely a very nice piece of art right there. So, yeah, that... Those are all the servants and the craft instances we'll have access to, well, we have access to right now and in a couple of weeks. The ones that really stood out, uh, Anastasia didn't really stand out to me in any way, honestly. Yeah, she's got a good, lot of good utility in her kit. But her damage on her skill is very, very low and still skill, well, skill seal can actually be a bit of a demerit in my eyes because there have been many times where I've been fighting a boss, one of those ultra difficult bosses, and they spend all three of their turns just buffing themselves. And that buys me enough time to survive and get my cooldowns ready and all that other good stuff. So this can actually be a demerit. And honestly, because you can't control when bosses will use their skills, that means you're going to be taking damage. So yeah. And let's see. Charges and stun chance. This this one's definitely a solid skill right here. Pierce invincibility isn't good, definitely. Arts up is definitely good, and Rusted Opponents debuff for one turn. So this is definitely designed to be in just in conjunction with this. And Rusted their defense as well. So yeah, she needs to be constantly spamming her skills and that noble phantasm that she has. Now, you might be thinking, is it worth pulling on this banner? Well, Per, for me personally, not really. Nothing in this banner really stood out. And that's because in four and five months, we are going to get one of the most sought-after servants after Merlin. And one of the, what I believe to be the most single, most powerful ability in the game from another of this year's Summer Servants. That being Scathed Scotty. People are waiting a lot for her because she basically superpowers uh, quick uh, allies. With this, as you can see, 100% critical damage and 50% quick effectiveness. She can also reduce uh, the enemy's defense by 30%, and she can also increase a single party's, a single member's MP charge by 50%, which is very nice. And her noble phantasm increases party's critical damage for three attacks. So if you can gather up all those critical stars, you can definitely deal a lot of damage. Although a lot of people are saving her. I want to get her so that they can combine her with Lancelot Berserker, who will eventually get a strengthening quest so that his Noble Phantasm also increases her uh, his MP charge rate, I believe, for a couple turns. So you run your Scotty, a friend Scotty, and Lancelot, you supercharge him, and he clears wave after wave, no problem. That's what people want to do with her. But this year's Summer Event Servant Bebe here has what I call the most powerful single ability, and that is this, Faceless Moon. Locks the set of dealt command cards for three turns. So this turn and the two turns after. Now, this goes away if somebody dies or you use the, any of those commands. But when you think about it, if you get a heroic chain on one of your support servants, you can suddenly switch him out with one of your heavy damage dealers, like in my case, Heracles from the back row. Use this and you will have three turns of absolutely massive damage from your strongest servant. And this is why I, one of the reasons I'm saving for for this summer. I won't go into the rest of the, the, the event, but the Bay Bay is definitely a good reason to save up for this summer. So yeah, the Anastasia banner. Honestly, it's the first dip into the new Cosmos in the Lost build. Nothing particularly stood out. Well, this one's definitely decent. This one is okay. I don't particularly like this one. So yeah, that is it. Hopefully you find this information useful. And we will see you next time.